So we're going to talk about prevention. And I think something that's really important is, at any point, I think it's really important for people to feel empowered, whether they're patients or not patients, whether they're ill or they're not ill. And I think that in regard to cancer, it's really important that people feel empowered because it's very, you have a lot of power over it. There is a lot that can be done. So about 70%, this is mainstream medical stuff, about 70% of all cancers are preventable. So if you're concerned about cancer because of family history or because of just personal concern or friends, there's something that you can do. 30% um, of cancer is caused by tobacco use. So that's pretty straightforward. That's pretty easy. And I can't say there's anything that tobacco is particularly good for. So that's easy to say, though, too, is that, oh, OK, just quit smoking. But that's a very difficult thing to do. And that requires a good amount of support and consistent support. So when I see somebody who's smoking, I say, I'll every, it's my job at every visit to say, you know, your health would really be better off if you didn't smoke. And, they, and that helps them, just knowing that just having that reminder from somebody else can be helpful. Not in a niggling way, not in a way that's making them feel bad or wrong. Because really, we just want them to be well. So here's something that might be surprising to many people. I said 30% of cancers are caused by tobacco. 35% of cancers are caused by diet. That's something that's very easy for all of us to change, all of us to improve, if we want to have a significant impact on our cancer risk. 7% Seven, uh, 7 so. 35% uh, of cancers are caused by diet. Only 14% of American adults consume more than two fruits and vegetables daily. That's according to the Centers for Disease Control. Almost every day I'm telling people, eat vegetables and fruits. Oh, you have low energy, eat vegetables and fruits. Oh, you want to lose weight, eat vegetables and fruits. I can't think of anything that I would say, don't eat vegetables and fruits. 7% <laughs> of cancers are caused by reproductive behavior. So. Um, PAP screening, PAP testing is particularly important in um, sexually active women. We could talk about uh, the Gardasil vaccination, and that's you know, the, uh, the uh, uh, cervical cancer vaccine and um, uh, uh, general wart vaccine. But that's a whole other conversation. So maybe if someone has questions about that, I'll talk about it afterwards. And 4% of cancer is caused by alcohol intake. So um, in people who are diagnosed with breast cancer, any consumption of alcohol increases breast cancer risk. One drink a day increases breast cancer recurrence. I'm sorry, increases breast cancer recurrence. One drink a day increases recurrence by 10%. Two drinks a day increases recurrence by 20%. Three drinks a day by 30%. So you get the picture. Um, it's important that people make informed choices. If a woman is a breast cancer survivor and she has a drink a day or two drinks a day, it's my job to tell her that she's increasing her breast cancer risk. And it's my job to honor the fact that that's her choice. So the reason why I say that is because I think it's important when we're dealing with loved ones that we give them information and not uh, needle them or harass them about these things. Okay, and. 1 to 5% of cancers are caused by pollution. So the reason, what's important to me about that is perspective. 35% of cancers are caused by diet. And we, get, we become so fearful of environmental pollution. Environmental pollution is outside of our control. And our diet is 100% within our control. That's why I say we're empowered to prevent cancer. We're empowered to treat cancer. Cancer deaths in women. 26% of cancer deaths in women are from lung cancer, preventable, most of them. 9% of cancer deaths in women are from colorectal cancer. That's diet and testing, preventable. 15% of cancer deaths are from uh, breast cancer in women. And there's things that we can do along those lines. So again, the perspective is, if your concern is cancer, there's a heck of a lot that you can do. 
And getting regular mammograms is a is is a effective strategy in improving outcomes. You know, we say that another way of looking at it, the things that you can do, is you know, I oftentimes correlate getting cancer with being in a car accident. Okay? You don't want to drink and drive because that increases your risk of getting into a car accident. You don't want to drive fast because that increases your risk of getting into a car accident. You want to wear your seatbelt because if you wear your seatbelt, if you get into a car accident, you're likely to fare better. But sometimes you can do everything right and you still get into an accident. So, you know, with the prevention component, we want to do the right things so we reduce our risk. And sometimes stuff just happens. And so if, you know, you've done everything right, sometimes stuff just happens and it's okay. Now, we, you didn't do anything wrong. Just, you know, it's okay to, it's okay. So, the positive things that you can do are eat mostly plant-based foods and avoid processed meats. Exercise, 30 minutes, five to six times a week, helps to prevent cancer. Don't smoke, restrict alcohol intake, maintain a healthy weight, the way that you maintain a healthy weight is primarily through diet. Eat lots of healthy fruits and vegetables. Some people here have heard this before from me. Um, something else that can be done is to drink a few cups of green tea every day. Green tea is um, something that I'll discuss later in treatment that does help to reduce cancer risk. Ensure optimal vitamin D status. That's a very easy to do with any physician. Just ask for a vitamin D test and make sure your levels are good. Vitamin D plays an important role in the healthy division and maturation of cells. And cancer is a, is a disease where cells are not maturing and functioning properly because of that. We also want to, especially for prevention, we want to ensure optimal B12, folic acid, and B6 status. And that can be easily um, measured with a test called homocysteine. That can, as well, it's a simple blood test that can be done by your, by your doctor. And if you want to, you can eat targeted foods that are preventive. Green tea is one of them. Turmeric is very preventive, very effective, even for treatment of gastrointestinal cancers, for sure. Ginger can be helpful. Cruciferous vegetables are beneficial. Shiitake mushrooms are wonderful for improving immune function. And even though it's controversial, soy as well can be helpful. So that's